In today's video, I'm going to show you on how to become minimalist this 2021. channel is all about creativity, photography, and a little bit of filmmaking. So if that's something you're into, please consider subscribing. All the gears that will be mentioned today will be linked down below. So without further ado, let's jump into the first one. For the bag of choice, I have the small bag from Big Design. This is the 5 liter version. I wanted to stick to the basics and on paper, the Big Design Everyday Sling looked like the right bag for the job. I have the version 1 of this bag in ash color. I've had this bag for more than a year now and I found myself using it more and more. I carry this bag wherever I go and it stands its purpose. Every little detail on this bag is well thought out. From the strap, zippers, and stitching, the design is purposeful as well as well placed and well coordinated. It feels tight and secure and doesn't feel as though it would rip if it got caught on a branch nor does it feel as it would degrade if it was constantly exposed to the elements either. The hardware is made from anodized aluminum and stainless steel. The zippers are smooth and don't ever snag. The build quality on the everyday sling is top notch. The attachment points for the strap feel strong and give a sense of being over engineered which is great uh, because it doesn't feel as though it they'd ever tear or give way. Even so, if it start to give signs of breakage, Big Design offer a lifetime guarantee on their products. You can modify the interior of the sling to accommodate your particular needs using the dividers. These are Velcro dividers that attach to the sides of the bag's interior. They utilize perforation in several places that allow you to use them as a standard divider or cubby hole or even a shelf for your camera. Inside the sling bag is a zipper pocket that runs the length of the lid, which is good for similar accessories you want to keep in order. Within that very same compartment is a number of smaller packets to sort out items like memory cards and cables. There is a front packet with an easy access zipper that is handy for anything you need quick access to, such as your phone or your house keys. Another interesting feature about the bag is that you can adapt how you wear it for different activities. You can wear it as a bum bag. This was handy when going for cycling or you want to keep your lenses always available to you during wedding or engagement. For me, I wear it across my chest. I adjust the straps length tuck it into a cleverly concealed packet on the back of the bag and away I go. My camera of choice is the X-T3. I super love this camera. I've been using it for almost two years now and I couldn't recommend it enough, especially with the release of the latest um, X-T4 last year. Price has significantly dropped for this gem and if you're lucky, you can find it on eBay brand new for £7.99. I literally use this camera everywhere I go, from travels to professional works. I even drop it for dozens of times and it still performs well as it should. Thanks to high quality full magnesium alloy construction from front to back so it is designed to be abused in the field. It is a true workhorse camera. You get a good sense of the toughness of the camera when you hold it in hands. The camera feels similar to a high-end camera with its solid construction, aluminum knobs, and weather sealed buttons. The grip is not as large as comfortable as my, my X-H1 though. So if you want a bigger grip, uh, you might consider adding a grip accessories. You can find plenty of grip options from Amazon or other third-party manufacturers. If you are not familiar with Fuji X series cameras, they are all about retro manual dials and controls, which is why I enjoy shooting with this camera so much. But manual control does not mean that you cannot use the camera in auto modes either. Any of the exposure settings can be set to auto, indicated as a red A on dials and rings, allowing auto ISO, 
aperture priority, shutter priority, and program modes all without having a PASM dial that we are so used to seeing on many DSLR and mirrorless cameras. In terms of overall ergonomics and button placement, the camera largely remained the same when compared to its predecessors and the changes are very cosmetic. So if you are already familiar with the X-T2 controls, the X-T3 will feel right at home. If you are concerned with the autofocus, this camera had its latest firmware update last October 2020 and had tripled the autofocus speed from 0.06 seconds down to 0.02 seconds, bringing it in line with the autofocus speed of the newer X-T4. The algorithm that predicts the location of subject has also been improved according to the change log. The only downside of this camera is it doesn't have IBIS and the battery life isn't great but Fuji has fixed all of these on the latest X-T4 but definitely a great camera to have. My lens of choice is the 35 f2. I have shot thousands of photos using this lens and I can definitely use it the entire day. As opposed to 35 1.4, the 35 f2 version is compact lightweight, offers weather sealing, faster and silent autofocus, and a filter size of 43 instead of 52. I find the F2 F stuff is still sufficient for low light shooting to a certain degree and will create a nice blurred background for portraits when shot wide open. The coolest thing about this lens is the fact that you barely feel that it is on your camera. It is extremely well suited for the smaller X-series cameras such as the X-T30, the X-T3, the 200, and the newest X-S10. Better yet, it fits perfectly in a pocket and won't bother you for walking around during a shoot or for travel when you want to carry a couple of lenses. The lens feels solid with a good sturdy well operating aperture ring and weighs a mere 170 grams. The 9 rounded diaphragm blades give you nice looking bokeh. The picture quality this lens can produce is great unless you pixel peep. There is little to complain about and it delivers the same level performance as we see in other F2 lenses such as the 23 and the 50. If you're looking to experience the world of Fujifilm cameras and traditionally have picked a zoom lens for your setup, the 35 F2 WR is the kind of lens which could change the way you shoot and I would encourage you to try it out. And for the strap, I choose the Peak Design Lite version. I've been using this strap for about more than a year now. It is the smaller sibling of the original slide, designed for use with mirrorless and smaller DSLR cameras. It has been a great match for my X-T3, but it is not perfect. There are few things about it that I found aren't particularly ideal, however, I am happy to live with them. The tightly woven nylon webbing that makes up the Peak Design slide light looks great is built to last and is smooth to touch. It isn't scratchy or rough in any way. The edges feel tapered off and rounded. In the most recent version of the slide light, the nylon webbing has been improved with much tighter and far more durable weave. Although web nylon is rather solid and tight, it doesn't get too uncomfortable to wear for long period of time. However, I am well aware that depending on the weight of your camera and lens combination, it could potentially get rather uncomfortable. Given how easy it is to change the lens and wear it a different way, I'm sure that would help. It does help me. I change it up regularly. One of the other recent updates to the slide series of straps includes a silicone rubber grip which has built in to help keep it from slipping off your body when using it as a shoulder strap. The quick pull adjusters are made of a nice looking combination of aluminum and plastic. They feel good quality and don't give the impression that they're going to give way anytime soon. To lengthen and shorten the camera strap, all it takes is a quick flick of the quick pull aluminum adjusters and a light tug on the strap. It will quickly slide through in either direction. The anchors can be mounted to either side of the camera as well as on the anchor mount attached to the bottom, giving you multiple ways to attach and wear your peak design slide. My iPad of choice is the 10.5 version which for me still works well though I drop it during my holiday back home 
hence the cracks on the screen. The design is classic but well throughout, largely the same one Apple has been selling since 2013. Looks distinctly old fashioned next to the home button free iPad Pros for 2018. This is where I browse photos ideas, I respond to emails and still fast enough to edit photos on the go. And I'll continuously use it until it breaks completely. I also bring SD card holder to keep my cards organized and protected. Um, a small speaker, there not a lot to say about this speaker. I normally use it to play music, say I want a couple to go slow dance or play a child's favorite tune or whatever, just so they engage into the scene. Anyway, this is a great piece of tool to get your subject go the look you wanted them on. And for the dongles, I have the official Apple dongle to read my SD cards. I also bring um, Apple earpods just so I can listen to the music while I'm traveling. And cables and charger to charge up my devices on the go. I also have couples of batteries here for my camera just in case I run out of power. And basically that's it. If you like this minimalist setup, please let me know in the comments down below. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did like this video, leave the like down below and help me out by hitting subscribe. This has been Reggie. Spread the love, not hate. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.